Yo, what is up guys? Today we're heading off to cross the border between South Australia and Victoria. Why South Australia? Because it was the first place that popped into my head. I put such little effort into choosing the destination because the focus here is on the journey. Deep, I know. The whole point of this road trip is to ride my bike and have a good time while doing so. I've always fantasized about hopping on a bike and just riding as far as I could, but I never really got around to it. So one night, I messaged my dad and asked if he wanted to join me on a spontaneous road trip. I booked an Airbnb and less than a week later, we're on the road. There were a few things to take care of before we set off on a trip of this magnitude. I will admit, I was a little lost. I'd never done a multi-day road trip on a bike. My biggest concern was learning how to securely strap luggage to the motorbike, but that turned out to be pretty easy. The day before we set off, my dad and I attended to the vitals of our bikes. Brakes, fluids and chain condition. We also fueled our tanks and aired up our tyres so that we could hop on the bikes and head straight off the next morning. I start my videos by zooming down this freeway entrance but as you can see I can't do that today. Yes we did leave a little late which is why we are caught in the middle of peak hour traffic but here we are dad and I on our way to hopefully hit the South Australian border. Oh boy the excitement is real and I wanted to capture this feeling this feeling of excitement elation and joy. We've never done something like this, so for us it's exciting, it's new, it's big. The fact that we had to learn how to strap our bags to the bike, that's kind of something that makes it feel intrepid, right? So my luggage setup is the Krieger and then just the cheap duffel bag on the back of the bike. I think what we're doing is extremely achievable for a couple of beginner road trippers. It's about five and a half hours, no, nearly six hours of riding and we're going to pepper that riding with very regular rest breaks. Uh, the aim is to get to Warrnambool by sundown, so we have plenty of time. Like we're attempting to make a six hour journey in a matter of what, like, what's the time now? Eight o'clock. Seven hours? Eight hours? Which I think is, is reasonable. That's got a lunch break, a couple of fuel stops, some photo opportunities. First leg of the journey, Southeast Melbourne to Warrnambool. Now this trip can be done in about three hours and 40 minutes if you take the freeway the whole way there, but that would defeat the purpose of being on a motorcycle. So we are gonna head to Warrnambool via the Great Ocean Road, which adds about two hours, over two hours to the trip. I need to lock in and focus, man. I'm filtering, I'm worrying about my dad and I'm trying to yap at the same time. I'll see you guys after we pass the city. So day one, our aim is to get to Warrnambool through the Great Ocean Road, a route that many motorcyclists around the world dream of someday riding along. Our first leg of the journey was to get to the other side of the city, and this was fairly uneventful. Straight freeway riding with a touch of peak hour congestion. I was worried my luggage wasn't secure enough, so we pulled into a service station, but after a quick check, I realized it wasn't going anywhere. We then arrived at our first official pit stop, And then shortly after, we hit the magnificent Great Ocean Road. Words cannot describe how incredible this road is. It's so windy and scenic with a generous speed limit, a rider's dream. It was a glorious moment for me. I've driven this road in a car before, but I wasn't quite ready for how different it is when you're on a bike. It's a hundred times better. I'm someone who spends majority of their time commuting through the suburbs, so you can imagine how joyful this experience was for me. I will admit, we had some factors working in our favour. We didn't get a drop of rain, and because we went on a weekday, the road was fairly empty, which is a big win given that it's a narrow single lane in each direction. 
All right, here we are on the Great Ocean Road. The sign is over there. You probably can't see that on the super view angle, but yeah, man, what a mint ride so far. What a mint ride. It wasn't just the adrenaline and satisfaction of fanging it through the curves that did it for me. It was the scream of the CBR echoing off the cliff face, the smell of fresh ocean air filling my lungs, and the pure eye candy of hilly terrain on one side and the endless sea stretching out to the other. All I can say is, what an experience. If you're a biker, then riding a motorcycle through the Great Ocean Road should be a bucket list item. Hell, even if you're not a biker, riding a motorcycle through the Great Ocean Road should be a bucket list item. There he is. He should be coming up real soon. <laughs> Captain Slow has arrived. My dad and I enjoy these roads in very different ways. I like to twist the throttle and carve through the corners, whereas he likes to kind of keep it chill, nice and easy, and look at the scenery. See you later. Nice meeting you. We're back on the road. We've had two pit stops. One for breakfast, one for lunch, and then a couple of scattered breaks in between for photos and scenery and such. That was so wholesome. There was just a, a guy who saw the helmets, started chatting to us about bikes and uh, how he's kind of considering getting his license. These things are such great conversation starters. If you're an extrovert, awesome. If you're an introvert, it's your worst nightmare. Thankfully, I'm the former, I think. I love it when people talk to me about bikes. It's very wholesome. And so far, my experience on the Great Ocean Road, just in general, has been wholesome. Like, every biker has nodded or waved. There's a really strong sense of camaraderie down here, and I think it's because this is a true enthusiast's road. Like, this isn't just where you go to commute to and from work. If you're coming this way, you're probably going out of your way to enjoy this road and you're an enthusiast. Honestly, even the non-bikers are great. I've actually already had three cars pull over and stop on the side of the road to let me pass. Like this is a very popular tourist road too. So you have plenty of people who are doing like 20, 30 under the speed limit. But you know, I overtook a few and then there are others who just pull over and let you pass. Let me give you guys a bit of context as to why I'm on this trip and what makes it kind of important to me. Uh, I'm in a pretty good place in life, I'd say. I'm quite happy with my career, my relationship, my friends, my family. Everything's just really good. It's a beautiful thing to have that sense of stability and comfort in your life. I am someone who thrives in that kind of environment, but one of the drawbacks is it's so easy to find yourself just going through the motions, just day in, day out, following your routine. I had these grand visions of hopping on my bike with a tail bag and a backpack and just riding. Uh, I thought that's something I would be doing really regularly and I haven't actually done it yet. I soon came to learn that it's something you need to organize with intent. I kind of realized that if I was going to stick to the same pattern of just hanging around and waiting for it to happen, it never would. Hello? Lol. My sister let her battery run flat, so she's calling us from hundreds of k's away for a bit of jump starting advice. Where were we? Purpose and intent. It's something I realized I needed in order to get a trip like this going. But hey, that's what life is, huh? Discovering yourself, understanding the way you operate. And look where this realization has led me. Onto the great ocean road on my CBR650R, having the time of my life with my dad in tow. So good. I probably would have done this alone, but I don't think it would have been as good. I get so much more value out of being able to share these experiences with other people, whether it be my, my friends or my family, or even random people I meet off the internet who want to go on motorcycle rides. You want to have a race? No, I'm 
no, no, no. Just, right. just up to a hundred. No, 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 no. Up to a hundred. All right, to a hundred. After a bit of deliberation, we decided against it as we're both responsible adults. Onwards we journeyed towards our destination for the night. My knees were starting to feel it, but surprisingly my back and wrists were okay. That's probably thanks to the sheer volume of rest breaks we took throughout the day. This did however mean that nightfall caught up to us. We tried our best to race the sunset, but we didn't make it. This was by far the sketchiest moment of the entire trip. I forgot to record it as I was so focused on riding, but it got much darker than this. We're on a double lane country road with a 100k an hour speed limit, not a single street light in sight. Our visors were completely covered in bugs and fine water mist from the road. We couldn't see a thing. And every time an oncoming car's headlights hit our bug splattered, water covered visors, we were temporarily blinded. This was one of the dumber things I've done on a bike, but thankfully it wasn't long before we came across a main road with proper lighting and surfacing. We finally made it to our destination and needed some food. What better way to celebrate hours of riding than to hop back in the saddle and ride into town. It genuinely felt so cool to have my noble steed not only carry me hundreds of kilometers throughout the day, but to then park me up on an urban footpath so I could grab some burgers and bevs. What an amazing day. This is the stuff dreams are made of and it only gets better. I'll catch you all on day two. You say you've got them guns, but I've never seen you bang. You say you've got them drugs, but I've never seen you slang.